If I don't find anyone who wants to go on camera at a local college, I take a longer way home to pass a park, where I look for prospective interviews. This day I saw someone and called out, would you like to do an interview on YouTube? She said she would, and I'm so glad she did. If you had to give up one of your five senses, which one would it be? Probably feeling. Do you value your eyesight? I do. Are you thankful for it? Definitely. Who to? My mom. Your mom made your eyes? Oh, well, God. Where are you going when you die? I think I'm going to heaven. I don't know. I may be going to hell. Do you think you're morally a good person? Yes. Have you ever stolen something in your whole life, irrespective of its value? No. Taylor, have you ever used God's name in vain? Definitely, yes. Very serious. Punishable by death in the Old Testament. Right. Going personal, Jesus said if you look with lust, sexual desire, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Have you ever hated somebody? Yeah. Okay. The Bible says, he who hates his brother is a murderer. Taylor, you've told me you're a lying, blasphemous, adulterer and murderer at heart, who's self-righteous, which is a sin, and saying you're a good person when you're not. You're like the rest of us. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? <laughs> guilty. Does it concern you that if you died today, you'd end up in hell? No. It horrifies me. You're a human being. You're not a dog or a horse or a cat. You love life. You love the blueness of the sky. You love your family. Right. You appreciate your eyesight. You love music and good food and all these wonderful things that God has lavished upon you. And you don't want to give up your life. I don't really know who to believe in. I believe in God because that's how I was just raised. My mom believes in it, but I was kind of forced to go to church. Is she a Christian? Or She's a Christian. She's born again and she reads the Bible? Yeah. Well, you're listening today because of her prayers. She loves you and I love you and God loves you. We don't want you to get a hell. Now, Christian upbringing, what did God do for guilty sinners so he wouldn't have to go to hell? He rose again. He was on the cross. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Now, most people know that. But they don't know this. And Taylor, if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's why he said it is finished just before he died. He was saying paid in full. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines, a judge will let you go if someone pays those fines. He'll say, Taylor, you're guilty, but someone's paid the fines. You can leave. And it's legal. Well, God can take the death sentence off you. He can legally let you live forever, all because of what Jesus did on the cross and suffering for our sins and rising from the dead. And all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins. You know what that means? Repent? Uh, could you give me the definition? Yeah, it's when you're really sorry for sin and you show your sorrow by turning from it. You don't say I'm a Christian, but you fornicate and lie and steal and blaspheme and do these things that are wrong. You want to please the God that forgives you, so you walk in continual repentance. You don't play the hypocrite. Does that make sense? Yes. And then you trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes. You're going to think about what we talked about today? Definitely. When are you going to repent and put your faith in Jesus? I don't know. Let me see if I can speed up your process. <laughs> when are you going to die? In like 50 years. Everybody thinks like that. Everybody thinks death is what happens to other people, but a lot of people die young. In fact, 150,000 people die every 24 hours. God forbid you could die in your sleep tonight, aneurysm, if you think I'm trying to scare you. I am because life is really scary. No, it is. I know. No. So there's a sense of urgency. Don't put it off. And don't feel pressured by me. Don't feel pressured by your mum. Be pressured by common sense. The God who is life itself is offering you eternal life as a free gift. How foolish it would be to put it off, because that's what Satan will say to you. Put it off. Do it tomorrow. A lot of people will be praying for you and give your mum my love. Will you do that? Yes, definitely. Taylor, I just asked you if you have spiritual thoughts, and you were kind enough to say that you do. Is that right? Yes. Is it ever serious? Yes, I've been hospitalized for it, and I've definitely tried to take my own... Any reason for that? Well, I just felt like there was nothing really for me to live for for a while. 
because my parents, my not my parents, I didn't have my parents. I was living with my aunt and uncle who didn't really care about me. Did you feel hurt? Definitely. Whenever we get rejected, you'll feel hurt, and it goes like this. It's a very predictable and downward path. Hurt, rejection, self-pity, resentment, anger, hatred, depression, suicide. And it can happen over years or it can happen quickly. You can have someone just say, I don't like you, I reject you, you feel hurt by them, you feel resentful, you feel depressed about it, and you want to take your own life. Go right back to the beginning and examine with God's help what hurt you and just say, I forgive them from the heart. And that will release you from the bondage of that downward path. Is this making sense? Yes. Taylor, get right with the Lord. <laughs> you know, at the moment you're under, under the, the depression of death itself. And when you come to Christ and you're born again, you come into life and light. And then your life will have meaning in the sense that you'll better tell others who are just like you. There is hope in your death. There is hope in this life. That's why the Bible uh, calls the gospel the good news. And there's no greater news. The Apostle Paul said, thanks to God for the unspeakable gift. That's everlasting life and God's love illustrated in that cross. So I'm delighted you're gonna think about what we talked about. You do that? Definitely. And no more suicidal thoughts. I'll try. With God's help, you'll try. Definitely. People often say, I'd love you to talk to my unbelieving friend or family member. Well, why not send them this video? Just click on the share button and say, I'd love to know what you think of this. There's nothing offensive about that. Send it and then pray. Do it today. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, The Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of the most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com. If you've never watched Homosexuals Left Speechless after hearing the gospel, you're going to love this. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.